flame will burn bright anew, and the necromancers will be the first into the fire. Lords will lose their power. But what will happen to Vertiel? Thy world is weary, all but extinguished. Nothing remains to be saved. It must be cleansed. But inside me is all the power I need to regenerate my world. At the cost of mine, do not think it. Vertiel needs the world heart. Thou canst not sacrifice it thus. There are still dragons, and this way the necromancers will be destroyed. The fire of the world heart is not completely out. It will burn bright again, in time. But without us, I forbid thee to do this. I will not die for thee. And so ends the tragic, though nonetheless heroic, tale of Vulcan Half-Demon. I confess I may have romanticized some aspects of the story, though in my defense, I shall always have something of a soft spot for our dear Vulcan. By releasing the World Heart's energy to the surface, he sacrificed himself in order to heal Vertiel and bring an end to the long winter. Ill-prepared for such a powerful energy surge, the Ice Lords were instantly reduced to cinders. I can tell you, no tears were shed at that funeral. Of course, it was only a few centuries before other would-be mages attempted to follow in their footsteps. Though what wonderful centuries they were. With Captain Buffalo leading them, the Freeborn Blades legend grew, and they flourished for a time. Sadly, the legend of Buffalo's immortality proved less than accurate, and... After 27 battle wounds and another 40 or so years, he eventually died in his bed, to the great sadness of the three charming young women who were sharing it with him at the time. Edwin's corpse was mutilated and burned by the command of King Relmar. Such a waste. I remember being quite disappointed at his decision, as I had hoped I might be able to inhabit her body. It had been an absolute age since I was last inside a woman, <laughs> to no one's great surprise, Relmar proved to be a formidable monarch. Strong, just, and loved by all. He returned a sense of pride to the elves that the war had stolen from them. The Red Scribes... Ah, oh, really? Don't get me started on those imbeciles. Nonetheless, it would be uncouth of me not to mention how heartbroken young Sybil was by Vulcan's death. Proud to have fought alongside such a courageous companion, the beautiful young scribe lifted her head high and transformed her grief into purpose. She quickly gained the respect of her peers and was elected chief scribe shortly afterwards when Liestas died quite suddenly. Apparently the fool succumbed after having imbibed a large quantity of a somewhat questionable nectar that he and his doctor had invented. And as for myself, Hmm. Well, my goodness. I fear that is an extremely long story, and you would quite literally die of boredom before I finished the telling of it. But you see, that's what I like so much about mortals. Their stories last just about the right amount of time. It'll take a few decades, and then they're done. 
and then they come around again. One thing is certain, I have all the time in the world, so who knows, I may get to tell you other tales, if you live long enough. Toodle-pip.